So it's time to go ahead and get started on the next phase of the parking attachment right here. And I just got through setting up the vertical head. We got it trimmed in nice and nice and true. And this is the block that I'm going to be working on right here. Piece of three and a quarter square. I believe it's 4140. And what I would like to do, it is just slightly oversized, not very much. What I'd like to do is go ahead and try to square it up very minimal, just kind of touch it off and make a very light cut just to kind of true it up and make it make it square. And we'll have to uh, mill the ends and get those square. And then we'll have to do some milling, basically turn it into a piece of angle plate is what we're going to be doing. But it's going to be this piece right here. That end of the parking attachment there, that's what we're making. So after I get it squared up, I'll, I'll go in there and we'll start doing some milling. Probably use one of the roughing end mills, maybe a shell mill, I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to use the six inch face mill for now and just try to get her squared up and uh, then we'll move on from there, okay? Alright, so I rotated it to the back side and I'm trying to focus on these two areas that's going to be squared up the best because that's going to be the bottom and the back of the, of the piece that I'm making. This area that I marked with the yellow is the roughest corroded part of the metal or the block should I say and this is all going to get milled out right here. See, we've got two sides that just kind of cleaned up square. I've still got material there to bring it down to three and a quarter. So we're doing good. Alright, so now we got two square sides. Drop it there. Backers, the flat side of the ball goes up against the jaw, like so. So I'll just leave it like that and I'll just rotate the block one more time. Okay, so I got the block squared the way I want to and what I've done is I've just put some marks on the section that I'm going to mill out and so all that, you know, we'll still have some of those edges right there 
And no, it's not a perfectly square block, but it's going to work for what we need to do. So we've got some parallels in there. These are some inch and a half tall parallels. And make sure your vise is nice and wiped out. There's no debris in there, dust or anything. And this will leave us about 5 eighths or 11 sixteenths left down in the vise here. I think the first thing we'll do though is go ahead and let's see. We'll probably use this other side. And we'll go ahead and do some side milling and square the block up. So we may hang it off this other side. I just seem to get a better shot whenever I got the camera over here looking this way versus versus that way. And that's kind of why I prefer it, be able to feed it this way. So let's do that. We'll break this down. I'll, I'll find a good end mill. We'll go in there and rough these sides up bring it to size. So we're going to go ahead and do our side milling and I'll point out a couple things. I'm going to use this inch and a quarter end mill holder. This was just given to me by a viewer of mine, Jim Leachy. So Jim, we're going to put your tool to use that you give. We'll go ahead and get this in here. Now, so the cutter that we're going to use, we've got this inch and a quarter roughing end mill. This is one of the mills that were donated to me by Niagara Cutter and Seco Tools, uh, Dennis Nolan. I showed in s and Brand new cutter, never been used before. And we're going to use that to mill in the sides. So. Our first use of our donated tools from Niagara Cutter. All right. Here we go. Everything's looking good. I need to get my little cool mist set up. The uh, Noga Cool. We'll get started. So I got about an eighth of an inch to take off of that. So we're going to take, uh, let's do a sixteenth. I'm, I'm just going to move it over 60 thousandths. I'm running 168 RPM. Now let me slow my feed down here. This is two inches a minute here. Bumped it up a little bit on the feed rate there, We're at two and three quarter inch per minute. Okay, that was water, water drops and chips right there. <laughs> I did just fine. We didn't make any noise. Did pretty good. So, all right, we'll flip it around and I'll do the other side. All right, here we go on the other side. I'm going to take a cut, measure it, and then we'll take a final cut. This is a, about a 40,000 right here. We still got 40,000, so I'm measuring 7.165. So I'm taking it 7.125. That is a faster feed there. I'm at 3.6 inches a minute on that feed.
seven and one eight. All right, so I'm set up now, and we're ready to start milling this thing out. And what we're doing is we're going to be milling from this edge back. See what it was, two and a half inches. So I got it touched off there. We're going to end up taking two and a half inches out that way. And as far as the depth, I'm going to leave the base here one inch is thick. So we'll go down. Um, so that's uh, three and a quarter. So we'll go down two and a quarter on the depth. And I'm going to try some heavy cutting here. Now this end mill right here, this is a different one than I was just using. This is another Niagara cutter. Uh, this was my own that I had bought. It's an inch and a half uh, roughing end mill, but it's it's brand new. It's never been used. But again, you know, another another nice Niagara cutter there. So we're going to test it out and see what it'll do. See what kind of performance we get with this end mill and the machine. So I've already moved, I've touched off the top and moved down two inches and I moved it in one inch. So we're taking quite a bit. I'm going to slow the feed rate down and let it get in there and then I'm going to see how it performs. camera but I need to put something here to uh, block the chips they're they're swinging out here on me and I'm starting to get a little bit of chatter there once we got a full radius cut so I may need to back out of that let me uh, so I moved in an inch what I'll do is I'll I'm gonna back out to three quarters all right and that might take a little bit of the pressure off of it. I got my piece of plywood and this Noga magnet there to, to hold it in place. Keep them from slinging over here on me. So let's try this again.
All right, guys, that was our first cut. And I think everything went good. I do wish I had flood coolant set up on it, and I regret not doing it, but that mister will work fine. I'm going to back off the cut a little so I don't drag on the way back. Three quarter. That was three quarter. I'm going to go to inch and a half and we're going to do it again. There we go. Lock the table. All right, here we go. That's a pretty hefty cut there. Three quarter by two, quite a bit of metal. I wanted to use a big, one of those roughing shell mills, but the problem is the depth that I needed to go down to, which is gonna be like two and a quarter, I uh, wouldn't have cleared the actual shell mill holder. So that's why I had to use one of these end mills. So this is getting into the third cut here. I'm at a total uh, end feet of two and a quarter, so I'll have another quarter inch to go after this. So I still got a quarter inch on the back to take off and a quarter inch on this depth here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make two passes and bring the bottom down to the size. I've already mic'd it and I needed to come up 245 thousandths to bring it to the right thickness. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that. And the part's starting to get a little warm so I'm gonna let it cool after I make those two cuts on it with the uh, mister. And then I'll come back and just finish this end right here, this back side. taking another pass down the this back wall right here take another eighth of an inch off of it and then I'll measure it and we'll take a final cut there and bring it to size this is going to be three quarter thick in the end uh, I'm going to use my one inch mic and just see get about an, an average of what I need so still got an eighth of an inch it's measuring about 878, 7 eighths, no. 879. So we'll just take another eighth of an inch and then we'll, we'll, we should be there. I'm not worried about the finish on this wall. This isn't going to be serving any purpose there other than uh, backing it up, you know, giving it structural support. And we still have it. We got an angle to mill on here too, uh, going across there. Some of that will be removed. There we have it. All right, man. I'm happy with it. Now, of course, we still got some other features there that we're going to have to mill into it. Uh, I'm going to have to come in here and we got a slot to mill here. We got an angle to mill across here. 
And of course, we got a hole to put in it, but I think I'm going to do that after all of it's welded together. I just used the blue Sharpie and blued it. I'm laying out a line that I can just kind of indicate or level up with, uh, you know, parallel. And we're going to be milling this off there. So I've got a line inch and a quarter from the bottom of the plate here. That'll be where it starts. And then two and a half inches in from this side, which this will be the width of the main body that the two plates that I welded together, that's the width right here. So I'm just going to line up my scale at the very top edge of that and the top edge of that line there. Okay, so I'll level this up here and we'll mill that little bit off. Alright, so I'm setting up the piece back in the, the mill vise here, and I have this vise just barely tight, just enough to hold it to keep it from moving. So this is the line that I scribed that we want to make parallel and remove it. Nothing critical there. So what you can do is just take any kind of nice uh, square block, a tool bit, a parallel, wherever your height needs to be. Okay, and I've got this you see I got it kind of where I can move it and I positioned the back end here about even where it needs to be there we go right about there alright so then we'll just hopefully we can just tilt it down bring it on down but I'm gonna have to bring this up just a little bit I'm gonna snug the vise just a little bit more too much all right so I'm gonna get the back end a little closer there I'm gonna snug the vise a little bit Okay, that, I can see that line just barely peeking through. I went ahead and put a little 8-bomb torque on the vise. Looks like we got a perfect line right there. Alright. I'm going to make two cuts. One will one will be just kind of like the rough most of it off and then we'll come back and finish it. Uh, let me see if I can kind of get an idea what I need to crank up on it. Looking like five eighths. Yeah, it looks like we're right at five eighths is what we need. All right, last cut. Looks 
like I'm just on my line, hitting my mark. she is I want to do a little bit of cleaning and do some filing I use this I use this coarse file like so get her cleaned up though and then we'll uh, kind of compare it to the to the real part of her, the the factory part let's take a look at how everything's coming together so here's the part that I just milled and it's gonna fit there just like so there it kind of is you know in relation to what's there So this will go there, it'll be flush, be flush with the bottom. And then right here, we've got this piece of plate that I've still got to finish. It's just rough cut out. And it's going to end up going right there. It'll be pinned on here. There's our two pin holes, which I've got to drill the two holes here so we can pin it together. And then we'll do a couple holes there where it pins this one together and get everything clamped nice and tight it'll all be welded on there starting to starting to look like something so I've been posting links to the part that John Saunders is building which is this piece right here so it goes right here this is where it pins on this is the piece that pivots it's going to swing in like so. I'll have to do a little bit of milling on this plate for it to fit properly like it needs to. I forget how much I've got to take out. It's not a whole lot. About an eighth of an inch or so. I've got to mill off the one side of this. You know, and then just the way that K&T actually manufactured this, I'm not going into the extreme that they did with all these different crazy cuts. I'm just going to make it work. So, like you can see here, the way it's casted, and they must have went in there with, um, you know, some kind of big miller, milling cutter setup, and cut all this at one time, and you can see the radius in here. But the part, the way I've got it machined, is that you know John is going to build this to the specs that I give him. It'll fit in there, and it'll rotate. That's all that matters. It ain't, ain't going to bind up or anything. So this will all be fit properly so that's where we're at and I'm going to take a pause from here and get started on something else here pretty soon though and I hope you enjoyed the video I had a lot of fun today doing all that heavy milling and we'll be back for some more okay